Welcome to Creating Happiness. You are in the right place to find happiness, confidence and freedom. I am Steph and this is Sheila. Hello. Hello. We are back in the studio today to record our second amazing episode featuring in our mental health theme. So to continue our mental health topic, today we celebrate World Mental Health Day with our second episode titled, How Do We Think? Question mark. Mm. So what do we actually mean by how do we think? Because we all think, don't we? Yes, most certainly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've kind of narrowed it down to two types of mindset. Mm -hmm. So we've got the open or growth mindset. Right. And then we've got the closed or fixed mindset. Right. So okay. we're going to talk about these two and, yeah, we'll see where we get with our conversations. Mm. <laughs> so starting from the very be beginning, as we always, always do, why is our mindset even important, Sheila? Well, it is so important because people who achieve great success, whether that's whatever a success means for you. It could be a happy relationship or it could be rising to the top of your career. Um, but people who achieve that great success in their lives were often told that they would amount to nothing. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah. Um, but they did it anyway. And, um, you know, on the other hand, some people have lived their life believing that they could not achieve very much. And so they don't. Do you know, I can so relate with the first example because I grew up with only my mother and we weren't, let, let's say exactly, you know, the richest family mm. either. Mm. And time and time again, I was told I couldn't do this or this mm. opportunity wasn't available to me. And I, I, you know, several people literally tried. They went out of their way to make me believe that I wasn't. I wouldn't be able to achieve, to get to where I am now, mm -hmm. and I think that was the single most motivating thing in my life. Well, there's the thing you see, which shows that you have an open mindset or a growth mindset, mm. because a lot of times we're we're put down as children, un, unintentionally maybe, mm. maybe to protect us from the big wide world. Yeah. But nevertheless, some. Why do some people f take that? repression and turn it around and other people don't mm -hmm. other people some people believe that they're not capable of achieving anything and so they don't yeah whereas some people think oh I'm gonna do it anyway that's right I'll show you yes <laughs> so that's the difference that's why our mindset is really important to, to how we how we are the the only difference between someone succeeding and someone not succeeding is how they think mm -hmm. and what they believe do you know i think this is super right now in the world we are in mm. this is absolutely the most important thing that we can we can think about mm. so i wonder if you can think of any examples mm -hmm. steph where people have sometimes famous people have been told that they're never going to amount to anything well yes that's we've got three examples here and they're great ones so first of all walt disney he was fired from the kansas city star newspaper because he they said he lacked imagination and had no good ideas <laughs> Now, can you laugh at this? I mean, that's just incredible, isn't it? When you think about how successful Walt Disney has been. My goodness. I mean, yeah, he was told he lacked ima imagination. That's crazy. <laughs> and then you got the other one is Elvis. Elvis? Was, yeah. Really? He was told by the concert hall manager at the Nashville Grand Hall Opry that he was better off returning to Memphis and driving trucks. <laughs> Because he used to be a truck driver. And I think when he he uh, auditioned mm. at the Grand Old Opry, he, yeah, he, he was told to go back to what he was used to doing. Great. Elvis, I mean, the most magical, the king of rock, you know. No, I don't... What do you think these, this manager thought after seeing Elvis? He must mm. have thought, oh, my goodness, I got this wrong. 
Yes, ah. didn't it just? Yeah. <laughs> but it actually what it's showing is that Elvis was going to do it anyway. Yes, absolutely. That's the thing. Absolutely. And then we've got Albert Einstein. This is my favorite one mm. because it's hilarious. So he didn't speak until he was four and he didn't read until he was seven. And he was expelled from school and was not admitted to the Zurich Polytechnic School. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's right. So, yeah, it's what made the difference. Yeah, <laughs> it's just incredible, isn't it? So basically, our mindset is either closed or fixed and or a, it's a growth or open mind. Mm -hmm. And they're both very, very different. And mm. it's it's how we think. We're yeah. not conscious of it, but it's actually how we think. Walt Disney and Elvis and Einstein all believed um, in their ability. They knew they could do it. And any setback was only going to be temporary. Yes, I think that's the key. They knew they could do it. Mm. There is, whenever you find yourself overcoming a challenge that you would end up overcoming, if you think back, there is this feeling within you that you know you're going to do it. Yes. There is nothing and no one that will stop you, at, yeah. except a truck hitting you, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not Elvis's truck, hopefully. Yeah, no. So let's talk about, first of all, a fixed mind, or maybe we'd call it a closed mind, um, mm. because so that we know what we, we sort of don't want to achieve, if you yes. like. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get rid of that one first. Well, so people with a fixed or closed mindset only really believe in their abilities. Mm -hmm. So it all boils, boils down to what they can do. So their brain really responds well to praise and achievement. For example, they might be really good at school, um, really good at, I don't know, math or whatever in school, get a good grade. And when the mm. teacher says you're really good at this, they mm. feel good. And that's that's really the, the pleasure in it mm -hmm. that counts. So they get rewarded for doing stuff, doing mm. things. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, and, and also the other thing is that there is no no looking for a challenge, no wanting to get better or be mm -hmm. better at something. There is just this achievement of a grade, for example, and that's that. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So th that that shown that, and there's nothing wrong with having a closed mindset if, of course. if that's what you want to do. Yeah. But it, it limits, it doesn't expand. Mm -hmm. It limits you to where you are now. And it's very different from sort of saying, what could I do better? Absolutely, because a closed mindset will think that your you if you have a closed mindset, you will think that your your intelligence is limited. Yes. There is no expanding it or bettering it. Yes. Inverted commas. Yeah. You will think that you're born with either born or not with a gift. Mm -hmm. For example, I think I need to get better at math, mm -hmm. but I know I can. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you have a closed mindset, you'll think. There is no chance. Well, if you have a closed mindset, you just say, um, I, I can't do numbers. Yes, that's Full right. stop. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. So we've looked at the closed mindset, but now we can look at how does our mindset, either fixed or growth, work when we have a problem. And now we look at the open mindset as well. Yes. Well, of course, the open mindset will always rise to a challenge. It will ask... Instead of just being happy that they did well on that test um, and, and sort of praise themselves or, or receive the praise, someone with an open mind or a growth mindset will, will always say, hmm, but how could I have done better? Mm -hmm. I only got 98%. How could I get 100%? Yep. You see? And that's a different way of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, but what where it really comes in to power is is when, when we're faced with a problem and there we see that people with a, a fixed mindset or a closed mind are very discouraged, perhaps even going into a spiral of depression when there are setbacks because the setback dents their belief in their ability. Hmm. They believe that they were wrong to believe that they could do it. I if, see. If you see what I yes. mean? Yes. So they, be te they tend to become uninterested in that project and they give up. Mm. 
that's quite powerful to think that a failure will make you believe you're not good at something. That's right. Yeah. Whereas on the other flip side, if you've got an open mind, if you've got a mind that's open to growing, then when you have that setback, it doesn't knock you off your perch sort of mm. thing. It it just says, where's the opportunity to learn? How can I do better? Yes, and I guess because we're human and if we do feel a bit sad that something went wrong with a growth mindset, you will quickly bounce back. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And people with that open mindset tend to try harder in an effort to overcome the problem. Mm -hmm. So they don't see the problem as being debilitating. They see the problem as, as an opportunity opportunity to get over it. Yes, and also... To fix it. Yeah, and if, if it, the person determines that, for example, this specific project isn't for them, then perhaps the setback is an opportunity to find another opportunity. Mm -hmm. So it's never about the failure. It's always about the advancement. Absolutely. Mm. But there's some good news here. I mean, that mm. might have all sounded a bit heavy and a bit... Oh. <laughs> but the good news is that you can change the way you think. Oh, yes. We always say it. Yeah. And here we are again. <laughs> and you can change your mindset. You can change that automatic thinking Mm -hmm. And we've got some tips for you. Yes. So the first tip is think about whether you have a fixed or a growth mindset. And this is really down to awareness. Mm -hmm. We always talk about how it's important to be aware of something before we can fix it. Mm -hmm. So here we are saying yeah, this again. <laughs> absolutely. So when you're faced with a problem, do you give up? Do you feel discouraged? Or do you think... How can I get over this? How can mm. I make it better? Yes. Basically, do you think there is hope or not? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. And then the second tip is train your brain. Mm -hmm. I love, I love it. Yeah. 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 Train your brain and think about what you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. what, do you th what do you think about? Do you even know? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, it sounds crazy, but we often don't know what we're thinking about. <laughs> I know. It's like the brain starts its day and we're not even part of it. Mm. Mm. So uh, do you think about what you're thinking about. It's uh, I love it. Play on mm, words. Mm -hmm. And then watch your words. So they will tell you what you're thinking. So if you're, whether you're speaking out loud or to yourself, notice what, what the phrases are like. Are they leaning towards the, a growth mindset or are you telling yourself you can't do something mm. you're not able to or there is no hope or whatever you're telling yourself mm. i mean even something simple like preparing a meal mm -hmm. you know we have to have all the right ingredients there and the right vegetables or we have to have a plan of what we're doing yeah but then when it's presented on the table are we critical of ourselves are we saying Oh, well, you know, the potatoes aren't quite right or the cabbage oh. is a bit this and that. Are we sort of dis disconnecting ourselves from that? Are we giving up? Are we thinking, oh, I'm never going to cook that again because it's know? much too hot? <laughs> Do you know anyone who does the following? They cook a meal for guests and then as they sit down, they start complaining about the peas not being well done exactly. or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's... Oh, my goodness. So that would show someone who's got a closed mind, whereas somebody who's got a growth mindset would sit down and say, I hope you enjoy your food. Yes. And they might be thinking, um, next time I do this, I think what I'll do is put the potatoes in a bit earlier or I'll put the peas in a bit later. Mm -hmm. So they'll do it in their mind and they'll be figuring out how to make it better. Yes. But yeah, they will, they, they will not be sharing any of it with anyone. No. Yeah. So these are three great tips and, do you know, it took me quite a few years to realise what I was thinking. Yes, I think we, we just go on automatic pilot mm -hmm. and we, we're not even sure that we're leaning towards the negativity or the closed mind or leaning towards a growth mind or Absolutely. an open mind. We, d we just don't know. I think for me, the key was to notice the patterns whenever mm -hmm. something happened. Mm-hmm. That's when I would notice my thought patterns. Mm. And that's that bit we talked about with when you're faced with a problem. Mm -hmm. And it's very clear which, which side of the you fence on. you're on. Yeah. <laughs> so before we close this episode, I just wanted to 
give a shout out to Chiara in Italy. And she's, I know Chiara, she's my sister, um, let's say adopted sister. Not sure how to say it, but we have different mothers and fathers, but that doesn't matter, does it? And she said that she's listening to the post podcast now and she loves it. And she says, thank you, you're amazing at lifting spirits and with your with your tips and ideas. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say thank you so much. I'm really happy that you're finding it inspiring. And yeah. Yeah, thank you, Kira. That's great news. Yeah. Lovely. So we've come to the end of this episode. And have we got anything else that we want to add? Um, I don't think so. Uh, thank you for listening. And um, it, you know, really helps us to spread the happiness if you can share it with your friends and your family. And if you feel like it, buy us a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in the meantime, have a happy and carefree day. <laughs>